here with the great Errol Otis. The amazing, uh, <laughs> so you're like, I'm sick of it. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, um, absorb it, absorb the praise. That's what I do. I praise people. But uh, yeah, so um, uh, absolutely instrumental in um, uh, cre- creating a, a, a path of encouragement for me to pursue my weird art. Just so you know, that's what you've done. You've did, you did uh, totally like uh some of the most essential dungeons and dragons artwork in the pe- like in the past um your illustrations are super unique and individual and um i'm just really uh happy that you made time to uh come do this interview with me <laughs> oh yeah yeah i i really appreciate hearing that because that's kind of uh, uh, it's very gratifying to hear you know that somebody got some inspiration from your work as i'm sure you know, you'd like to hear too. It's a, uh, yeah. it's like you're part of the whole shebang. Oh, you definitely are. I was, uh, I was hilariously, um, cause I, I'm not, I'm normally not very nervous of a person. I've met like a lot of crazy, you know, heroes and all this stuff. But like, while I was waiting, I was like, uh, to talk to you, I was thinking, oh, okay, is it going to be weird if I say it? How, like that I would just be on in the back of a bus, like looking through his art and being like, ah, I'm going to do this one day. I was like, you know, I was like, cause, cause some people are like, you know, don't they're let's just say specifically in Dungeons and Dragons, it's an, it's an acute kind of intense nerd at mm-hmm. times that can just be like, sweaty and like ah they're my hero you know so i was like a, a little bit afraid that maybe you would oh, you have overdosed on that by now or anything no no i don't think so and I actually i see some things or at least one thing up on your wall that inspired used to inspire me the same way the the warren magazines oh yeah yeah i uh i was a subscriber and and maybe not all three of them, but yeah, I have, a, I have a huge collection of those. Like I started in the early seventies and I went back and bought a bunch of back issues too. Cause I had, you know, had to have, I had to see the earlier, the earlier ones. And those are really, really cool. So many great artists in those magazines. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's, yeah, we could d- definitely start. I want to know, like, so you are you grew up in the midwest right and you were no you didn't so you Berkeley. Were, oh you you're from here yeah i mean my parents moved here when i was a baby but yeah i grew up in berkeley okay okay gotcha yeah. and then you would be and then you were you were kind of like growing up kind of just fascinated by the fantastical and stuff like that and that's correct okay so who are your some of your uh, your favorites in in erie i mean you must have been getting it kind of early on. Yeah, yeah, not not when they started. I think they started about ten years. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, it was the early seventies. But before, yeah, before those magazines, it was the uh, paperbacks, the little paperbacks, the Ace paperbacks with uh, yeah. with uh, Frazetta, of course, and Roy Crinkle Jr. Things like that. They were doing the Edgar Rice Burroughs books and the Conan books. And, um, boy, those were books were really cheap back then. <laughs> I know, yeah. They, they, I guess, uh, Prezetta's like, um, you know, cause there was early versions of Conan that, um, that are just sort of this like boring kind of Spartan looking guy. And then Frazetta kind of came along and turned him into this like bloodthirsty, wild, you know, crazy barbarian looking guy. And then that, kind of captured people's attention so much because it's such masterful powerful you know fantasy art but mm-hmm. that i guess after a while that he was people were buying those things so crazy and they realized it was the art on the cover so he mm-hmm. was like doing they were like we need you to just do a cover and then we'll write a book around what <laughs> you know that is and um but i could see i could definitely see you probably being like young seeing Frazetta and being like, Oh shit. This is yeah. Cool. And I was a real avid uh, reader and it, it worked out that I liked, <laughs> I actually, I liked the books that he was illustrating. So it was like this perfect, perfect storm. And there were so many of them, you know, so many uh, of, uh, Robert <laughs> yeah. E. Howard and Edgar Rice Burroughs books that it just was like this years long extravaganza. Um, 
Yeah. Did you, uh, so you're like kind of tipped off into that sort of graphic horror art, you know, weird stuff. And then you kind of started to draw that or like, were you like, Oh, I could maybe draw a wizard or something. Uh, like, that's a good question. No, I was drawing bef- before that. Um, you know, it's hard to remember exactly. I remember, uh, yeah, I don't think I have the best memories as a kid. I did definitely remember like six or so, you know, I had my, uh, my monsters and things like that going. Um, but before that, it becomes a little hazier. Uh, <laughs> before six. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Those yeah, are yeah, the yeah, hazy yeah. years. I cannot identify just the start, but I know by then I was rolling along pretty good with the, uh, because there were a lot of inspirations, you know, uh, on TV at that time. So they're starting out. It's amazing to me that the, what the first uh, Star Trek series was in the 60s, 66 or whatever. I, I, I remember, uh, being up later than I should be. And my dad was watching like the pilot of Star Trek. I remember that because I, I was like hiding, you know, I come out of the bathroom and I'm hiding in the hallway and I see, you know, uh, it's the one with the, um, uh, the two-parter, uh, you know, where uh, Pike uh, ends up. Um, I think that's the right one. Anyway, the green lady, although we had a black and white TV was dancing, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like just a six year old, but you know, you sense what's ahead. Yeah. And, um, yeah. You're like, and my dad's like, you can't watch this. And so, so I didn't actually get to see the first, cause it was on at night as I remember. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but I caught up with it later and then, uh, color TV was coming up in a couple years. We didn't have one, uh, but, uh, <laughs> my friend had one. And he also knew about UHF. Back then, I only knew about VHF, you know, as, right. as a kid. And uh, on, on uh, UHF was Ultraman. Oh. This is the dawn of color TV, where it wasn't really, really in color. It was kind of like, because, you know, these were not real expensive color TVs and everything was kind of purple and green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah totally. so, but yeah, Ultraman and, and all the monster movies they showed. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was. I was rolling before, uh, I can't remember. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So before Erie and Warren magazines, uh-huh. I had a friend <clears throat> now, now I'm not sure what age, but still pretty young, but his dad had a, a stash of not, not high quality Erie and Warren, but there was a, there was a crummier, deeper, uh, gorier, uh, uh, set of magazines i don't remember what they were called yeah i, I know the there's there, there was those that cut those kind of like we, bootleg pre-code sort of weirder yeah they were they were, they were the same size as i remember of, as hearing people they were lower budget but but uh just in general gorier you know a lot more decapitations uh-huh. and amputations and things i thought those were just fascinating you know we go into yeah. the garage in the dark and look at these and uh it was power. It was profound. It was a profound experience. You're like, whoa, dude, look at this. I know. I remember um, the first time. Uh, now, I think that people don't, you know, uh, have this in their mind if they're young people. But there was, you know, back in the day it was you would change the channel with a little clicker on the, TV, yeah. on the TV channel. And that's how you'd be like, OK, these are the here's the four channels. You know, there are the three or whatever. And uh, I remember when I was in kindergarten. Um, I, the first time in my mind that I was ever aware that a show came on at a certain time, I think mm. I was four or five was Ultraman. Mm. Mm. And, and I was like, Ultraman is on at this time I go, I, I, and you know, and I have no concept of time. So I'm just turning it on to the channel. I know it's the, it's the three. Mm. And then I just sit. And then like, wait until the time comes when Ultraman is going to be there. And like, that was really fascinating. And the thing that I think is kind of cool, uh, I don't know if you feel this way, but I'm, I'm very fascinated by your psychedelic tendencies and uh, in your color schemes and stuff that really influenced me. Um, I, in watching Star Trek and Ultraman and a lot of these shows from back in the day, I remember Lost in Space was really cool, mm. but mm. the effects 
of like magic or lasers or beaming or this was always this extremely saturated color, Mm -hmm. you know? And I was always like, whoa, that's so, it's so interesting. Like, I wonder if that kind of biosmosis, you know, sunk in into you and me and, you know, whoever, whoever was around at that time, because when you watch those old shows, it is overtly psychedelic, you know, mm. Godzilla movies and mm. things, like everything where it's like the colors are crazy. And then you got like Basil Gogos doing his paintings and it's real weird. And then, you know, you have the psychedelic art posters and, mm. uh, you know, uh, black light stuff and everything. But the, the, the way that I did, uh, that I got kind of, turned on to the psychedelic stuff was by looking at like these Mexican rugs when I was oh, interested and I, and yeah. I, and I, and I look at your stuff and I'm like, there's this very intentional gradation of colors on your stuff that has me um, feeling like there must be some kind of, I mean, maybe, I don't know, but like, I don't, I've ne- I up until the point I saw your, your artwork when I was little, and getting, you know, getting older and playing D and D and stuff. I was like, this is very different mm. than all the other stuff, like your approach. And I, I like, how, how did you, I mean, I don't know if this is just a dumb question, but I'm just like, how did that sort of evolve for you? You know, like in that color style. Yeah, as you've been, as you've been talking about this, I've been trying to think, how did it? And I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I remember, I don't think I got, you know, as you're talking about, I said, I said you know, okay, I don't think I got any kind of uh, um, color inspiration or sense from TV as you're talking about it. <clears throat> yeah. Because uh, we didn't actually have a color TV. Um, a little later than, than than some of the so a lot of the stuff Star Trek and Ultraman and things at my house was black and white. Excuse me. Right. Yeah. <coughs> I also inhale water. It's just uh, <clears throat> this be one of the parts we edit out. <laughs> mm, so <laughs> yeah yeah i like mm. that uh, i found out lucille ball was responsible for star trek happening that she yeah i guess that she uh because she started to become kind of like a powerful mm. in, individual during that time and that um a program a company uh, decided to go with a different show uh, instead of Star Trek. I think something that didn't last that long and certainly didn't have the cult status of Star Trek. But then uh, Lucille Ball was like, I'll produce this and I'll put the money up for this, for Star Trek. Wow. Well, that's right. It was like Desi. Yeah, Productions. Desi. Yeah, totally. Desi Lou Productions. Yeah, right, right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting to me the way things happen so quickly back then right like how they just decided to cut the original captain and go get shatner yeah she will william shatner mm. who like how could it ever have been anybody but him you know right right i mean it all, that worked out really well but i mean like it's it's just it's like you he did the part they aired it and then or did they i don't know and then they're just like you're gone you gotta get somebody else it's like yeah. pretty trippy um anyway, trying to think of uh colors it's okay we, we think about it but um but like okay because, you know we're you know where we're at like now is this sort of i mean this all must be very interesting to you i saw you in the uh dungeons and dragons the art of dnd you know documentary and you know in in a kind of a weird way you know, you, you first, second generation, um, artists for D and D are these sort of like mythical creatures in your, your own right to me. Mm-hmm. Like I've spent hours staying up at night when I'm, you know, trying to figure out how to sleep, like going on Wikipedia and going on these deep dives about Donald mm-hmm. C. Sutherland, the third, or, mm-hmm. or, or, or David Trampy. I mean, David C. Sutherland, mm-hmm. like David Trampier and all this stuff. And, to find out 
that you lived down, you know, in Berkeley. I was like, oh, that's so fascinating. This is so cool. But like, you know, you guys, the th- the thing, you know, and and it's hard to understand objectively, like what we've done in our life and how we've really impacted people. But it we are. It is very interesting where the stuff that you are doing. You know, I'm 44. I was born in 1978. So I didn't catch on till later. Oh, wow. Yeah. But but what you guys have done is created these like intense waves that have just kept washing uh, on the, the imaginations of people, you know, and mm-hmm. like I uh, I wonder what it must be like to sort of, you know, you work for a company that's like kind of making a splash. Mm. It, it's a big thing, whatever. But then like the art kind of changes and it becomes more, you know, different and whatever. And then after a while, I'm sure you like move on to do something else, but it's like come full circle now where it's like, you know, the, the nostalgia, like love and appreciation for the stuff. That's this sort of underground weird thing instead of the kind of pop culture, massive, you know, a phenomenon that it is now that mm. you guys are sort of a part of this, um, like early lore of the creation of this, you know, thing when it was kind of renegade in a way. And I wonder, yeah, I, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, for sure. This is like, th- you came after this, but this is full, <laughs> this is fully renegade. This is fully DIY self-made um rudimentary earnest nerdy ama- love you yeah know? that's that was yeah those are the books we started with and uh it was it was very um uh, yeah uh we were shunned by the majority <clears throat> yes of the population <laughs> and it's so great to be seeing you know how that's t- changed it feels a little little vindication you know yeah um but yeah it was uh Uh, not, not, not considered, um, well, yeah, somewhat, uh, you know, you guys are losers for playing D and D. Right. Of course. Yeah. And then that's like, uh, I mean, I never, I was always, that didn't bother me in the slightest bit. Cause I knew that I loved it so much. Wow. That cool. Something, yeah. Something that you love that much, you know, I mean, well, maybe not maybe not everybody, but I knew when I liked something this much, it can't be wrong. Just can't be, cannot be wrong. So, so I just brushed all that stuff off and, and tally ho, but uh, I know a lot of people felt bad. Um, really you know, being, being put down by their, um, you know, parents or something for doing, doing, uh, doing that, spending their time doing that. Their yeah. Valuable like, time. You see. Yeah. Your valuable time where you're not acclimating to the hypnosis of the status quo where, where you're, you're not, you're using your mind, you're hanging out with your friends, you're building camaraderie, you're building community. You're excited about something. You're being creative. It's like the fact that those are things that people look down on says so much more about our culture than it does about those people. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't, like you say, they're, it's not their fault. They're just totally bought into, uh, yeah you know, to, and and again as parents you know they're they're worried <laughs> you know they're like what is to become of yeah this is- the satanic panic thing um <laughs> must have been like very weird because you were probably deep in you were probably doing art for tsr at that time right yeah uh let's see now like what was the vibe about that like in the exact with- timing i cannot remember did he disappear while i was there maybe yeah, I, I don't remember the exact. Uh, I didn't. Um, the main thing is, I was I was disappointed that the executives were skittish about things. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. Uh, like but stand that didn't up. Really, it didn't end up affecting the. Oh, the I think what it did is that it made D and D more famous and popular and more money. Yeah, That's, perhaps. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, controversy yeah. does that. But you don't because I mean, they even made that movie, you know, that sort of movie, which was sort of like, I don't know, it's like, is that, who is in it? The um, uh, Dungeon Master, I think, oh. it's, where it's like yeah. this really crappy, but it's sort of this like 
you know, warning tale to people like it's anti D and D or something. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Yeah. I don't, I know what you're talking about, but, but I'm not sure I'd actually even watch that. Um, we should watch it together. We'll have a watching, <laughs> we'll have a watching night, but like, uh, so yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. So, so you were working at TSR, you're, you're kicking ass. I mean, you know, the deities and demigods, you're doing all this stuff. You're doing a lot of stuff for RPGs. And then you just, you move on. I, I saw, I read that you, uh, yeah, you went to art school out here, mm-hmm. right? You went, or you, mm-hmm. you, you were, and um, were you, how were you feeling about your relationship to fantasy art and the way that that was going? And then were you trying to become like a fine artist after that? Or what was the. Oh yeah. Well, so I, yeah. After I moved back here from uh, like Geneva, Wisconsin, I, I, Went to started up at Cal again, and this time, <clears throat> this time I was uh, just doing fine art painting there, as well as whatever, whatever else you had to do to do that. Because uh, uh, before TSR, I started there, and um, uh, it was a little bit of a problem because I didn't, you know, I knew I wanted to be an artist, but you know, <clears throat> what are you supposed to do with, to make a living? Blah blah blah, you know. Um, so I was trying to do. Uh, that people said, well, why don't you try uh, why don't you try architecture? That's kind of like art, right? Oh, no. So, 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 so well, you know, trying to think of something. So yeah. I was taking environmental design. It was immediately obvious to me that this was hopeless and that I would never be happy doing this. And so I was kind of in a desperate, you know, an angst type mood. Yeah. So when TSR, Dave Sullivan called me up and said, you want to work for us like yes yes and then the world was instantly transformed into one you know of of dismay and despair to joy and everything but after being there um for a few years i also felt like it seemed like a long time back then when you're 19 20 21 it's like i've been here a really long time i feel like i'm missing out on other things so i left went back uh, to berkeley and, and started doing yeah fine art or painting and I did, it's funny, I did that for a year, maybe a little longer. And then I don't remember my thought process was, was like, oh, you know what? I should go to uh, art school and, and you know, uh, learn, I mean, um, commercial art school and do some illustration classes. So I started doing that after that. Yeah. So um, I just felt like they, you know, I'd never gone to art school before. So like, I should do that and uh, see what that's about. Yeah, it's so interesting because nowadays, you know, working for like having a job, like doing, you know, D&D type illustration or kind of having kind of a job as like a, you know, an illustrator in a in an industry that's kind of expanding and growing and stuff. A lot of people go from try to go from art school to trying to get that as a, as like the destination or something, you know, right. but you're like, no, I'm going to go in reverse. <laughs> I, I saw a couple, I, I saw a couple of your paintings. They're really like thoughtful and interesting that were not fantasy. I kind of like mm-hmm. look through the internet and, um, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, so did your love affair with, fantasy role-playing games and all that stuff continue though did you just kind of were you just kind of over like you're done well that's that's interesting isn't it? i never thought of it like that and i never actually uh made any sort of conscious decision about stopping doing that it was more like i wanted to try other things okay um, yeah and uh <clears throat> uh yeah, there was always uh, gaming going on. Like some some friends of mine were were starting to get into computer games, making them and things like that. So I was paying attention to that, and uh, and uh, uh, somehow fell into uh, do, working for software companies that were making uh, graphic programs, paint programs, uh, animation programs, and I worked doing that for a while, and uh, doing some freelance artwork for uh, some friends who are making computer games. And then finally went completely in, into computer games and started doing that full time. Okay, so you were you were kind of like, went from like sort of beta testing things to... Oh yeah, that's one of the things we did at the, at the software companies, right? Would be like a, uh, you know, an in-house artist 
you know, using the software and going, Hey, can we do this? How is it possible to do that? Um, right. So do you, so that was essentially now you're, are you still working video games and stuff? No, but that's what I did uh, for a long time. Uh, I stopped in 2017. Okay. So I did it for like tw- full time since 93. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was like many years where you were kind of, distanced from the whole rpg like tsr that's the, true the way it was going and then was there ever a moment where you kind of i don't know maybe walked around in uh you know a, a bookstore or something and then saw like the D stuff popping up and did you were you ever like oh Wow, this this shit's really kind of this just picking up this well, this <laughs> like it's still going. Yeah, you know that's a good question. I, I as you were talking about that, I was starting to think, and um, I actually think <clears throat> I, I sort of became aware of it more gradually. Like um, I was working full time for uh, Microprose in, in Alameda; they had a studio there, and um, it was ninety three. And uh, the internet was starting to um, reveal things. And I think it was during that period that um, like other people knew who I was and I didn't know why. Like people. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? At the computer, computer games. Yeah. I seem to be getting more respect respect than I thought I deserved for some reason. You're like, you're like, why are these weird nerd people? Like, wow. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> sort of. It wasn't as dramatic as that, but yeah, picking up on Hanson, then it's little by little I started to realize, wow, this is really cool because, uh, you know, uh, that work that I did back then is really being uh, recognized. So yeah, and then I think it was probably, uh, you know, I don't remember. I know about nine or so years later. Well, I would, I would do. Uh, the occasional, I think maybe it started with Goodman Games. Oh, no, no, it was a little bit before that. I did a Hackmaster cover, and there was probably some other things before that. And I slowly got back into like doing some freelance um, painting and, and pending stuff for, for printed um, right. role playing game material. So when was it then? So you're so you're starting to see this. You're like, oh, OK, so this is kind of picking up steam because it has definitely been slowly and exponentially massaged into the consciousness of, of mm-hmm. pop culture. It is like fully. I mean, you know, it's I don't know. It's just out there now. But was there like, uh, you know, because I noticed this is like, you know, when you're you know, comic books, fantasy, D and D all, all this stuff is f- totally popular now. When, when we were, you know, younger, when I was young, I remember not being like comics were not cool, but now mm. comics and, you know, are Hollywood now it's all, it's all, oh, yeah. like, it's like the most, you know, but there's that transitionary period where like the nerds are just sort of like, look down upon and then all of a sudden you have people who are like totally not nerds who are like i just like nerdy stuff it's like no dude you go see the avengers at the theater <laughs> that's a, it's but, pretty incredible yeah that's true but you uh but so was there a moment when you started getting like invitations after a while to like they're like hey let's get him to come to these conventions like D conventions or i mean gen con and yeah 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 what's it uh, what was the first one like so through goodman games i started doing stuff for them regularly and uh they invited me to uh go to uh a convention it was uh actually gen con had a socal i don't know if that was just a one-year experiment um i guess it didn't go that well in terms of attendance but i did go down there um uh, but it w- really was just me kind of hanging out with Joseph. It wasn't a special guest assignment, but it was cool because he also had Dave Arneson down there. So Amazing. Was, I, I, not, yeah, I never met him at uh, at TSR because he wasn't 
you know, he and Gary had some kind of split. I didn't really go deep. I don't yeah. know that much about it, but anyway, but I did get to meet him at, uh, at the SoCal Gen Con. And I'm trying to think of what year that was. I cannot remember. Uh, shoot. But, uh, but then, and then I did also go to a, uh, the normal Gen Con in 2007, again, sort of like under the radar um, yeah. with Goodman, Goodman games. And then I, uh, I can't remember one of the uh, people associated with the North Texas role-playing game convention, smaller convention, but very, you know, hardcore devotees. He asked me uh, if I wanted to go to that. And so I got in contact with them. So I started going, going to that uh, semi-regularly. And that and was did you start cool. to see? Did you start to see people being like, this is like, Wow, it's you. I can't believe it. Like, where, where did you notice? I mean, I mean, because that uh, you just got back from Gen Con, right? Is that where you just went? Oh, no, I just went to Gary Con. Okay, Gary Con. So, you, yeah, that you're, is... you're, you're well loved there, I imagine. Just oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's, so great. Calm. it's great. Yeah, that and, but the, yeah, I, I started going uh, to Gary Con several, let's say I went in 17, 18. 19 and then skipped of course a couple of years there and again yeah. but i started going to north texas in um i would say 2011 and that was my first experience with you know uh like i say hardcore devotees and they're very cool and yeah it was pretty neat to see uh some people who were you know very excited and wanted to tell me about how you know the D D basic box covers burned into their brain yeah and, uh, stuff like that so that was really neat really neat and it's really fun just to you know sign some things and, and and make people happy like that but also run games you know and have people in my dnd game and run a game for them because i love i love dming and playing a games too so dude that's awesome that you're a dm that's like that's that sounds uh like to have you dm a game for something like that would be like a dream, man. This mm-hmm. like the guy that did the cover of deities and demigods is DMing again. That would be that would be awesome. Are you, do you are you DMing out here in uh, Berkeley at all? Yeah, yeah. We had uh, let's see, uh, both uh, as a player and as a DM, we had we had a uh, couple of really long uh, running campaigns. I think the one that I'm I've been running a lot started in two thousand eight because uh <clears throat> that's when fourth edition came out i think or right around there i was like well let's try this out so i started up a campaign to try it out i didn't <clears throat> i didn't really like i mean it's a good game but it didn't seem like dnd it seemed like it was transitioning into something more structured so we kept the campaign campaign going but i i i set it back to first edition again which is what i really yeah, actually, my game is like first edition blended a little bit with the original three pamphlets. It kind of is a little hybrid there, but anyway, um, yeah, what we, oh, yeah, so yeah, it is great, uh, uh, DMing for people who are really enjoying the experience because I also love to DM, so it's just very, very, uh, well, that you, I mean, that's like it's creating its world building, it's like, yeah. and it's like really fun because you're there, sort of. I don't know, like you're the steward of the um, world and the the sort of the experience of the other players. Mm-hmm. And that must, you know, that's super fun. I, I haven't done it in a many, many, many years, but it, the thing that I thought was fun was drawing a map and building mm. out like the things and be like, here's the traps and here's the, the creature. And then uh, the thing that I really loved was it was like borderline, anthropological because you're like well this creature never hates this other creature so they can't be in the same room and then you know and then like sure. you, know, you know and then you're like it's like uh you know you know that there if this creature is here there's gonna be five or six of these other ones around and then i don't know i love i love that stuff as oh, a it- you know, detail oriented nerd, you know? It's yeah. Really- it's ran. It's super creative. It's like a common. I mean, if you want it to be, it's obviously it's writing. And if you, if you want to be it, it's, it's the visual arts combined with that. It's like, <clears throat> it's like a, I mean, it is a discipline. It uh, is complete, complete discipline that combines so many different creative uh, aspects. It's really amazing. Yeah. Do you, um, do you have any like memories of playing in uh, 
um, in Geneva, like Geneva, like early on, like when you're, were you able to play with any other artists or people from D and D that just stick out to your memory? I hope this is, these are okay questions. Oh, I, I'm absolutely. absolutely a nerd. All right, good. <laughs> no, 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 they're absolutely. I mean, at TSR, we, we, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we played, we, we played D and D. The one that sticks out for me is they had a little contest. I can't remember who it was 80. Uh, it was a contest, a DM contest, and and um, I was allowed to to participate even though I was an employee, which was cool. And you had to DM for Gary Gygax and uh, I think Jim Ward, uh, Bloom, Brian Bloom was there, and I think um, Will Needling maybe. So I was running a game for those guys, and uh, they really seemed. To, I thought Gary in particular seemed to uh, like it and enjoy it. Um, but uh <laughs> excuse me dude that's crazy you were dming for gary gygax yeah yeah that, that that was that was i mean it didn't i mean and most of the time we we didn't interact with him that much i mean he was there in the building but we were you know uh, separate so, you weren't allowed to look him in the eye or anything. no it's not I'm that. Just kidding. We really <laughs> of, yeah we weren't really thinking about that you know um so that was neat to do um but uh i I also just have great memories of, you know, when we started, when we started with the three pamphlets, you know, we didn't know what the heck it was. We had just been going to uh, our local game store in Berkeley. Uh, and I think I'm going to say it was called Gambit, Gambit Games in Berkeley. Okay. Somebody's on a friend of mine was picking up chain mail. And we tried that. Well, we had been playing the war games with the hexes and things like that. So uh -huh. we transitioned into chain mail. Could, didn't get it. And then these books came out and he got those, brought them back. And yeah, uh, it was clearly super magical. The whole idea of le leveling up, you know, was yeah. born. Uh, and that was that's super addictive. Oh yeah. Because you're getting that reward. You're like, the more you play, the more powerful you become. I mean, it's just, it's just really cool. Um, and, uh, yeah. So those early memories of playing are pretty powerful too. We just like, uh, just, you know, we didn't really, we didn't go, wow, wow, wow. Or anything like that. <laughs> but you know, it just like took over my life. It was just like so beautiful. Yeah. Did you, did you get to play with any of your other artists like Jeff D or did you, or any of these dudes? Like, oh, at the at TSR, yeah. Uh, let's see. Was it like a uh, bullpen of artists? Like, yeah, we were a little, yeah, there was uh, me and Dave Sullivan was the art director and he, when he hired me. So it was just me and, and Dave shortly though. Uh, um, Jeff D. Bill Wilhelm and Dave before. So there was like five of us. Okay. And then shortly thereafter, Jim Rosloff. Was oh there, was yeah. So that was the crew. And Dave was, I don't know what was it. Well, they hired Jim Ross up as their director. So I guess Dave wasn't the director anymore. But he was still working there and doing things. Um, but yeah, we would play, you know, we played a lot of different games, not just D D, but they had a lot of, you know, uh, uh, they would come out those little tiny mini games and we would play test those. And uh, there was a regular fight in the skies game that my uh, my car was one of the authors of that. Uh, yeah. Um, How did make, they, go, ahead, go ahead. I was going to say when we, we would make up games too and, and play them, I had this weird thing where there was a, made this giant map, you know, the covers the living room floor and um, a bunch of alien. It was kind of like alien. Uh, uh, yeah, it was like a last man standing thing anyway. Um, That's cool. How, so how did you, okay. So D David Sutherland was like, saw your art somehow i mean how did he find out about you? Oh. Did, how did you did you apply for that like oh no just one of those amazing amazingly lucky things i've been we have been like i say going to that game store there was like a little uh newsletter tsr put out called the strategic review okay and that was that was before the dragon and in one of the latter issues that we're going to be coming out with this magazine called the dragon and uh, I can't remember they were calling for submissions or I think that they mentioned they were going to be going to color because the strategic, strategic review was uh, was no color. I mean, they would print it. It was black and white, but sometimes they printed it in all purple ink. Sometimes they printed right. it blue ink. But anyway, so I just started sending artwork into the Dragon, like unsolicited uh, by really? anyone personally. And 
you know, memories are usually wrong, but I claim to remember that they never said anything about using my work. And I, I, I subscribed to the dragon and then at the second issue of the dragon showed up and had my artwork in it. So I was really blown away by that. But I, I, I claim that that was a surprise to me because I remember. But they don't, they're like, nah, we told, we told you or something. That, I know I didn't ever, it's only, yeah, I never actually, uh, that Dude, that's that early yeah it's all shrouded like, in mystery shrouded in mystery i don't yeah. remember but uh but yeah so 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 my heart was floating around there so yeah them um, they believe trampier had quit tsr so they were looking for an artist and dave called me up right why he called me up i again i don't remember exactly but i remember you know he said well, you you want to come over for an interview and i'm like yeah i would like to do that and i live in berkeley california and he'd seen this was on, on the phone you know, the road. Oh yeah, of course. Right. You're right. So, so I couldn't see his expression, but there was some, uh, some sort of uh, reason for me to suspect that he was surprised that I lived so far away and it was, but anyway, he said, yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll fly you out and you can interview him and stuff like that. Wow. But on my suspicion, I mentioned this before, and actually this might be the last time I tell this story because I feel like I'm repeating myself, but oh, yeah. the area code in Wisconsin was 414. And back then, the all the whole Bay Area was four one five. Yes, and I never really knew how they uh, uh, came up with the area codes. And I claimed Dave Sutherland didn't know either, and in fact thought that I might be closer than I was when he called me up. But anyway, well, that well worked out. Like you could put that together, I guess. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> this is, again, again, I never really asked him about it, and uh, these are just weird suspicions that formed in my mind. Yes, more shrouds, more mystery, mm-hmm. or that. So okay, so because tr- I know that Trampy was doing uh, that. You know, he had those like really interesting comic shorts, With Wormy, mm-hmm. Wormy in Dragon. Yeah, he was still he kept doing that for the the Dragon, which was like kind of a separate, you know, some TSR it was of course, you know, affiliated. But um, yeah, did you ever have the chance to meet him ever? No, I didn't. Yeah, I, I remember uh, finding out about, you know, because th- and this is actually to, to this is sort of one of the reasons why I was like, because I, I, I'm kind of an intense person and I'm an intense, like nerdy appreciator guy and I get all excited. And uh, so I but I read about um, him quitting TSR for whatever reason. It's also shrouded in mystery. But then he went and became like a cab driver Mm -hmm. and then there was a photo of him as a cab driver and then all these nerds found it and then we're like trying to find him again and stuff and he's just like dude leave me alone right and and so i'm like i don't want to do that to you (laughs) oh yeah no i'm not yeah yeah i appreciate that i'm not i'm not hiding and i I was never really done um he had the had had enough of the business side of it because <clears throat> he had that game Titan. I mean, think uh, it was a great game. We played Titan a lot. That's one thing we did at TSR. Okay. And I think he uh, was trying to, again, I don't know what I'm talking about here, really. But he, I think he was selling that to Milton Bradley, some other big company. And I think he had, I was like, he had another bad taste in his mouth thing from the gaming world. And he just decided, I'm, a, I'm walking away from this. Yeah. And, you know, I think about it's really interesting because, you know, I'm able to kind of be this colorful artist person who does weirdo paintings and illustrations and dragons, all this wacky shit. But I enjoy I'm like, your comic book quite a bit. But. Oh, thank you. But yeah. thank you so much. Well, and, and I'm but I'm like validated daily. And and people tell me I'm doing good and I am mm. there is no shortage of encouragement. Mm. You guys did not have that. It was like maybe somebody says like maybe an art director or David C. Sutherland or something is like, hey, that's a cool uh, that that's a really cool Aztec looking goblin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you get like one person. But you don't get like the world telling you this. So I imagine that uh, Trampier was like, man, fuck this. I'm out. You know, it's like you don't have, um, you know, the kind of benevolent encouragement that 
is available now keeping you going. And and who knows, he might've just kept going, you know what I mean? Mm. You mean because sort of like the, the mass ways of communicating easily, you know, yeah, etc. Well, I mean, there are people I know who basically their art style is sort of this derivative version of his mm. and they're totally successful mm. artists that are doing good and that can, you know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. I think that uh, it must be really strange uh, to, you know, I mean, it, you being sort of the recipient, I mean, you're still here, you're still alive, you're still like, you know, you, your spirit is big, you're here. You were able to see that beginning to now. Oh, yeah. You know, and it must be like really surreal to to rec- to see that, you know, back then you're you know, in Wisconsin, like some small, some small place, whatever, maybe somebody cares, maybe they won't, who knows, whatever, you're just doing your best in the day. And then now, you know, 20, 30, 40 years later, whatever, you're just like going to conventions where everybody's like, you changed my life, man. You know, it's like (laughs) such a weird. Yeah. It's cool to see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, back then I didn't, when we were working it, it didn't matter that we didn't get much feedback because we were, we were just having such a good time doing what we were doing. I love Um, that. So that never even ever, there was never any sort of like, I wonder, no, it wasn't like, dude, that's, you know, we do this stuff and we send it out there and that was just too much fun just to do it. It didn't matter. That's so beautiful, man. That's so beautiful. Um, now when I was in the sixth grade, Somebody gave me a deities and demigods mm. and it totally changed my life. I was, <laughs> I was like, what is this? Oh my God. You know, I'm like, what? And then, you know, I still, you know, I have it all the time, but you, there's a little bit of controversy around your art in this, mm. in this mm. book, the Cthulhu mythos. Yeah. And so, so wait, so let me ask you this. How familiar were you with like Lovecraft's? Oh, I was quite familiar. Yeah, I had been reading that as well as as Robert E. Howard and Burroughs' Lovecraft. I really liked it. I really liked the, you know, the coolness of of. I I just thought it was cool horror. Um, you know the uh, uh, what's what's the way with the the way he would. Uh, <laughs> things things that you know you cannot know and that blast your mind you know and that, <laughs> it's that just really appealed to me so i've been reading his his stuff and actually um shoot, I can't get mind remember. blasted baby yeah yeah and i saw a uh, fritz lieber read a lovecraft story on halloween at the community church of some kind in berkeley um That's and i can't remember what you yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I didn't realize how cool that was, but it, but because um, I also had been reading Fritz Lieber and that and that was neat. But he just yeah. did an amazing job of reading Lovecraft, the statement of Randolph Carter. Oh, it's not a it's not a very long story, but it's the one where you you're familiar with it at all. Yeah, dude. The, 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 I, dude I'm, I'm a full on Lovecraft weird. It's the one where like one guy goes down into the grave with the radio line. Yeah. And I was just I was just. I had chills. Anyway, so yeah, I was very into Lovecraft, super, super. So when that came up as one of the pantheons, I wasn't, uh, yeah, I really, I I mean, there was certain, so I want to, hey, I want to do this, I want to do this, and I'm like, no, I'm doing that. And, oh, uh, yeah, you're like, I'm the Lovecraft guy. Well, I didn't say, yeah, I, yeah, I, didn't, I it was just, you like, weren't I, like I, a jerk about it, but you're like, dude, I, uh, I guess I, I probably was, but no yelling was needed or anything like that. It was just my, I think I just had my, my, what presence. My, like, I think they may have sensed my, my, uh, determination and no, well, and yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but then unfortunately like they, they had to take it out because, uh, whatever. You know, I, what's I, I, not, I don't think that. I think this is all public domain now. Oh yeah. Now I don't, yeah, I'm not familiar with the copyright laws, but it's been a while. Right. So, well, I just want you to know that in the second issue of skin crawl magazine, which I'm almost done. It's all right. 90 pages. This one big, a big, big guy. I, as an homage to you, 
Um, and I did an adaptation of a Clark Ashton Smith story. Oh God. Yeah. I love his stuff too. I was about to actually about to mention him. Yeah. Go ahead. So this image here. <laughs> yeah. I did my own version, uh, my own two page. There's a two page spread of, uh, that I did from the story called the seven geases. Mm -hmm. um where he meets up with you know he goes down you know god to god to get you know demigod to deity to whatever and um i did a full errol otis you know spread in nice uh, yeah that's like you know well it's you know my version so it's you know whatever but um but i was like oh i can't wait to show you like i look forward to seeing that yeah yeah. Clark actually spit this one of his uh paperbacks i got early on and i i don't even know who the artist is and i I should i've scanned this picture in before so i must have the book but it's this weird underground scene with purple stalactites and there isn't necessarily a focus there's all kinds of little creatures running around it's really was one of those uh images that um affected me oh yeah i never knew who the artist was yeah yeah, you know who uh, did? I like those uh, Lovecraft covers, those psychedelic ones that nobody knows who the artist is, or or it was like a guy named Bill Pepper or Bo- or something. Some Are those thing. the faces? No, um, those are that was a series that I had. Was the ones okay? Were- it's not those. It's uh, they're very psychedelic. The Dunwich oh, okay. order, but very strange. But um, yeah, Clark Ashton Smith is sort of like the psychedelic Lovecraft or something. Yeah, you know, it's like really. Are you familiar with that? Oh shoot, what's his name? Did the book The Nightland? Oh, earlier I think that was supposed to be, have been sort of an inspiration for a lot of these guys. Um, the Nightland, a little, yeah, a little earlier. Um, not a yeah, because it's not. Um, anyway, it's it's, uh, it's not it's, William Ho- Hope Hodgson. Not not that. The oh wow! You know all that stuff. All this stuff. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the house on the borderlands and stuff like that. I don't know, but let me let me ask you. So, in uh, as far as underground comics and stuff, did you ever get into Richard Corbin? Do you like? Oh Corbin? yeah, 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 yeah. But it, that again, that was well, not again, but yeah, I, I encountered his stuff in, in the Warren magazines. Yes, uh, and then 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 uh, then I saw some of. Uh, his other things, um, the underground comics things, but yeah, just yeah. a lot of really, really cool. In fact, I, actually, I think the very first creepy I found mm-hmm. had a, a Richard Corbin in it. Actually, now that I think about it, the slip Mickey click flip or some weird. Okay, it, yeah, it was really weird. Um, yeah, I have like so much of that. Like, it had a really weird title because they had yeah. an interesting authors that would do weird things too and they would team up. But um, yeah, yeah, I love his that. stuff. It's such a unique uh, combination of technique and then his aesthetic. You know, this, the, the people, they have this certain pudginess, uh, puffiness. <laughs> yeah. um, really, really cool. Yeah, totally. Like and he was puffer. very good at that, uh, like, d- you know, m- mangling and maiming them too. His gore was really good. Yeah, super good gore. And then that uh, developed his own psychedelic printing style. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really interesting. I still I still am going to I feel like I want to know how you maybe you just like you were using acrylic paints, right? Like Like, for some of the colors. Yeah. So the acrylic paints, maybe you were just at the time because you were saying that you're like 20 when you did this. Uh, That would. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Jesus, dude, 20. How how disciplined is this for 20? Oh my I god. I didn't think about it. That's the weird thing, you know. Dude, these are the it. weirdest colored blends. Like what? That's wild. With the with the with the green. Yeah, I like that part you're pointing to the green and the purple, yeah. Yeah, with the beige and uh, flesh. You had color. a you had a preternatural uh understanding of like what would make them what would make this kind of look cool and otherworldly you know like also look at this that's very that's the best part of the whole cover oh you like this part oh yeah that's the best part damn straight (laughs) worship worship the truth yeah so so okay so i know i was like 
when I first emailed you, I sent you my book. I was all, he'll see that I'm an acolyte, an Errol Otis acolyte, you know, and I'm a weird guy. But like, I was thinking like, you know, like what, what do you do now as an artist now? Are you just sort of, are you retired? Are you kind of just chilling? Are you drawing as you wish? Are you? Right. Yeah. Well, I'm retired from corporate computer game. Um, okay. But I'm still hoping to do a, a few dive in a little bit on a, a particular project, which I will uh, refrain from discussing lest I jinx it. But in the meantime, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the occasional uh, uh, freelance project, uh, mostly role-playing game paintings and pen and ink drawings. Um, I'm working on one right now uh, for uh, <clears throat> Good and Games had it, uh, Jack Vance, Dying Earth, Yes. Uh, version of the thing Kickstarter and uh, uh, as one of the um, I did a bunch of paintings for them but then as one of their uh, stretch goals because I used to run stretch goals I uh, I wrote a module uh, an adventure module for that that game wow. system and I'm doing a, a couple pieces of artwork including the cover um, incredible uh, for it and I'm very happy to say I, <laughs> I'm behind and I just got an email back from Joseph and I asked him, okay, I need another week, man, to do this right. because I don't want to rush it. He said, yeah, that's fine. So gonna yeah, if you up. want the cool slime green shadows on yeah, I'm going to have to leave out the green, man. <laughs> Red, <laughs> green. And wait, just got to wait. Well, that's cool. Well, that's, yeah, that's amazing. Um, that really like it really um encourages me to keep going and also i would say that like my heart is very uh full with the idea that you're going to be continuing mm. to do Thank your you. art oh god dude i'm i've yeah i've like i've held you in such reverence <laughs> Since oh. for so long, oh my God, you and Jack Kirby and Bernie Wrightson and Richard. I can't Moore. believe you're mentioning it, the same those guys. But anyway, I no, I'm. You know? Oh my God, yeah. So it's like it's cool. It's cool to uh, if you ever want to do um, anything paid, all of course. But if you ever want to do something for skin crawl, even if it's oh. just painting for a cover mm -hmm. or. Um, my Kickstarter's are really super successful and fun, but. You know, maybe you want to do whatever you want to do. Anything you ever want to do with me ever, I will make it happen. Like whatever. Oh, awesome. Want. Yeah. Yeah. Because I am. That is part of the uh, one of the pillars of retirement is continued, you know, continued income modest as it might be. So, uh, yeah, I'm into doing. Uh, oh, we'll get you paid, work. baby. We'll get you paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm, uh, you know, I uh, like. I do a lot. I sell a lot of stuff on my web store and I do print releases and they, they do really, really good. Like maybe you ever want to do something, anything you want to do, like we can talk about this off, you know, off the. Sure. Screen. Sure. Yeah. And the one thing I'm struggling with and I really want to do is people really want to get signed prints and I really want to do that. You know, I want to do a couple different versions of signed prints that are maybe not a limited edition and then a limited edition as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm really daunted by the logistics of having to mail <clears throat> that stuff. You know what I mean? Because I just, for it to be a signed print, it has to come to me. I can't just say, Oh, internet, deliver this onto them. Uh, I'm not even, you know, in the, well, I have good news for you, brother. Let me tell you something. I have on my web store. I have, I, I get my prints made here in the Bay. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. sign them all. And then I take them to my friends that do all of my fulfillment and handle all the customer service and everything in Walnut Creek. Hmm. And they take care of, and they make my shirts, they send them out. They take my prints, they take my toys, they, they send everything out. They maintain, if I go, Hey, I want to make this, th sell this print. I send them the image. I tell them how many, then they deal with the whole thing. So we could get an Errol Otis shop going where you, uh, they take a percentage of whatever to ship it and to deal with it, but that you can essentially promote it, tell people, tell me about it, I'll promote it, tell whatever, whatever you want to do to uh, make it so that you can make money so that you can continue to play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all. Yeah, absolutely. That's all super important. But, <clears throat> but I also, I really want to uh, 
you know, people have been asking about this for a long time <clears throat> and I've been saying I want to do it. So I, I really want to, to fulfill that thing. And yeah, so, so, so that's, <clears throat> excuse me. It's all right. Well, it could be near the end of my speaking engagement. <clears throat> no, it's okay. We're, we, we literally have one minute left. You are only <laughs> obligated for one more minute. And I'm okay. So I did to- want to say, yeah, I do want to do the prints both, you know, for the, uh, the doing of it and to have them exist to make a little money, but also I know people, people want them and I want to yes. fulfill that. There are people everywhere who want your art and want, and I think that there's definitely a good way and I, we can, we will talk about it and um, I will support you every step of the way to make it easier for you. And I'm here to help artists. That's my whole thing. I, mm. I, I've, I've learned a lot of, uh, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned from them and I have found like a lot of really good, um, like, uh, solutions to everything that I want to do in order to operate. Mm. And and so Mm. I don't want anybody to have to learn those mistakes. I could just tell you, this is what I do and this is what I have been dumb and I can facilitate it all. So, I mean, it would be my honor. It would be a pleasure. So, Oh, I I could, I could use the help just, you know, cause, uh, uh, like I said, I've been trying to think about, yeah, I'm like, oh God, I can't have my life taken over by going to the UPS store. I'll no, it, you, and you know what? You won't have to do that. The hardest thing, the, the only thing you'd have to do would be like sign the prints. I'll oh yeah, no, that's, that's it. Yes. Sign the prints and then take them to fulfillment basically. Yeah. I'll drive them up there. I go up there all the time, but I can oh. introduce you to them. Like, well, you know, they, they'll build you a little, a little web store on the site. I'll show you the whole thing. And everything, and I'll show you the whole thing, and you can see mine, you can see what I'm doing, and then uh, I could introduce you to them, and then they could walk you through it. If you like the deal, cool. If you don't, that's fine, whatever, but we'll get it. We can, it's an option. Awesome. Awesome. So, everybody, this was the greatest. This is the coolest interview. I can't believe I got to hang out and talk with you for a little bit. This is a a huge. Oh, it's great talking with you. Very easy. And, and, uh, yeah, you you helped uh, uh, like bring bring some things to the surface there too. Cool. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Errol. I appreciate you. <laughs>